Hey guys and welcome back to another Tasty Blender 2.82 tutorial. Now today we are making a very tasty MoGraph using the molecular add-on. I will show you where to find the add-on, how to install it and how to use it. We'll go through a couple of basic settings and we'll try and make a really cool looking MoGraph. Let's get into it. So to find the molecular add-on, just type molecular script uh, Blender 2.82 into Google. One of the first hits should be Molecular Script Add-on Blender 2.82. When you click on that link, you're going to be redirected to Blender Add-ons page and you can try and find the where to download section, which is going to take you to a GitHub page. Just download the WinZip or whatever system you're using. When you download it, return to Blender 2.82. When you get back to Blender 2.82, just uh, open your edit, uh, go to Preferences, and in Preferences, choose the Add-on uh, tab. When you're in your Add-on tab, click on Install, which is going to be in the top right corner and choose the zip file. Then you just have to click on the molecular add-on tick box and your add-on is installed. I've opened up Blender 2.82. I'm going to add a plane and I'm going to resize it to about four. I'm going to add a cylinder like so. I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees. Go into edit mode, select the front and back faces. Inset the cylinder to about yeah, here a thickness of 0 0.2. Press space and search for bridge edge loops. So we get this nice little loop. And I'm going to bring it back over here. Like so. Maybe just pull it down so it's here. Edit the actual plane. I'm just going to raise it on the z-axis like so. So it looks like it's coming out of a wall. I'm just going to put the collisions on the plane and I'm going to add also a solidify modifier before the actual collision because if you don't put the modifiers before the collision sometimes these processes can be a bit funky or again get a bit funky. I'm going to put the same collision on our tube and lastly I'm going to create a circle Rotated by 90 degrees. I'm going to go into front view so I can see what I'm doing just a bit better. I'm going to resize it down so it's approximately inside of our cylinder. Go into edit mode, press F, inset, and then create, let's say, a couple of edge loops just so we have a couple of faces. Let's push it back so we're not clipping with our wall. And I'm just going to Move the wall so it's touching the actual tube, like so. Now we have everything. We can start setting up our particle system. So we're going to select the circle inside of the cylinder. We're going to add a particle system, which is going to be put into emitter. I'm going to choose about 3000 particles. I'm going to set the end of the animation at 100 frames like so, like I have it down here. And I'm going to set the lifetime of our particles to 100. So we have a precise 100. I'm going to set the normal velocity to 5, or let's say 4.5. This is the velocity at which the particles are going to shoot out of the tube. However, it's worth noting that also the number and the duration of your particle animation, or rather simulation, influence how quickly the particles have to exit your object. Because if you have 100 frames and 3000 particles, they will go at different speeds out as if they were, I don't know, 3000 particles at 200 frames. So it's going to be a different type of distribution going to click rotation and randomize the rotation and I'm also going to take the dynamic one. Now I won't be using the halo setting. I will add another object which is going to be an icosphere. I'm just going to drop the subdivisions to one and I'm going to move it out of our screen over here. 
You can go ahead into edit mode and you can try a nifty little trick, which is control B and then just bevel it. But instead of just leaving it like that, you can just click on the vertex only and then increase the offset, which creates really interesting geometric shapes. We're going to select our particle system again. We're going to render as object and we're going to instance our icosphere, which is right about here. I'm going to increase the scale to 0.1. And I'll give it a scale randomness of 0.7. Now comes the fun part. We're going to tick molecular script, which is going to activate our molecular script add-on. Calculate particles weight by density. I usually use sand because it does behave a little bit more wobbly. Activate self-collision and the collision with others and activate particle linking. This is very important. I'm going to leave the top settings alone. However, I will touch the new linking at collision settings below, as I usually do. So I usually start at about 75% linking. I'm going to get a tension of 1.1, just dropping the stiffness to 0 0.9 and damping to 0 0.9. And the broken, I usually put it at 1.5 or 2. Some of these settings make sense, but when you start mixing all of these settings together, you have to be very careful of what happens. So bear in mind, you have to test a bit, but with these settings, you should be good to go to create a very like, wobbly type of simulation. Let's start our simulation and let's see what happens. And yeah, we get like really, really strangely like really strange behaving type of outflow. Let's press it so we can see it at 25 frames per second. Yeah, maybe it's just a bit too fast. So I'm going to free all of the bakes and I'm going to lower our normal speed to, yeah, two. You can also play again. You can increase the number of your particles. Let's increase it to 5,000 and see what happens now start the molecular simulation and you can see there's a lot more particles and you can see that they're now really behaving like a sludgy type of like very sludgy type of material um again you can test it give it a try you can see that it's really fun to try you can put obstacles, you can try different like uh, materials, like make it glass or make it shiny. If you'd like to see me explore those areas, leave it down in the comments. I always appreciate those. If I have enough time, I always try and respond to you guys. I see some of you guys have maybe, I don't know, trouble. Maybe I explained something not very clearly. So it's, it's whenever I can, I try to, to get back to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is going to be all for today's video. Hopefully it will help you out with your moon graphs and see you in the next one. Bye.